Good morning, world! I always wanted to say the good morning Vietnam, but that's been you before I did. <laughs> welcome to, uh, the, welcome, welcome everybody to Mac Mirror and Friends Show. This is the second of our uh, new series of cooking, Morning with B, Breakfast with B. So, uh, with joining me today is uh, my star behind the bar from Friday night. It's Camille, wrong side. Camille. Well, hello, everybody. Hello, Garrett. <laughs> hello, Brendan. And welcome Hello, back, Brendan. Um, I'm glad you returned. The first show, <laughs> first first show went brilliant. I thought we did really well last week. The flaming and the thunder, the pancake flips were great. I really loved those, um, flipping them up in the air. You got one out of two, so I thought that was pretty good for a first attempt. So welcome back. Yeah, you back. Can't, can't ask for much more, can you? No. Well, <laughs> this is um, this week. It's uh, all about core uh, our core uh, products at uh, Magmira. We've got a, a, a good range, but today we're focusing on one in particular, and it's the old mm. smoky one. Um, so um, I think we've got a little picture. There it is, Svens Rock. Look at that smoke behind. Um, so this is a great liquid. And um, I know, Camille, you do lots of things with this behind the bar. Uh, and, and from a mixology point of view, it's, it's a great ingredient, isn't it? I love it because it's not very peaty. It's just nicely smoky. And it just gives different sort of flavor into the cocktail. And I love smoky food. And I love smoky cocktails. And I love everything with a smoky. <laughs> right. So, 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 Brendan, I mean, you, you obviously, I think you're a bit of a fan of smoky whiskey as well. But um, so how have you managed to blend this into your recipes this week? What are you going to be doing for us? Well, I've decided to do two things with the whiskey, actually. Um, I'm going to be putting it in a batter for onion rings. Wow. Because, I mean, okay. you can't go wrong with onion rings ever, can you? <laughs> and I thought I'd throw a twist and actually put it in a, a cheese sauce using the smokiness in a cheese sauce. Wow. Ooh. I mean, smoky barbecue, smoky cheese sauce, it's all got a good uh, yeah. essence to there. But, no, uh, I love. I love meat, <laughs> cheese, whiskey, <laughs> all, I, it's, all things I like. <laughs> it's all there. I have to say, guys, I mean, what happened to the summer? I mean, looking out the window this morning, and it's been like 30 degrees for the last three, four days, and it's gone. You know? I mean, we're back to normal, you know? So uh, <laughs> normal service re return. But today, the sun's shining in our kitchen. So uh, it's all about the smoke today. Uh, Camille, are we doing a little deal for these guys on smoke this week? I think we are. Uh, should, we, about it. should we do some, many, some discount? Okay, let's do it. Okay, so discount for this week is buy any MacMira Core Range whiskey and get 30% off your second Core Range whiskey up on checkout to, uh -huh. by, by using a code Core Week. Okay, that's all one word, Core Week. So any one of the four, so the, uh, the Mac, the Brooks, the Eck, and the Rook, buy one, get another one, put the code in, and then you get a lovely discount. So there you go. That's going to cheer up your week as well. So, uh, Ben, without further ado, let's get in. There's a lot to put in the show today. So stop, uh, stop, stop, stop talking, Gareth, and get on some cooking, Bree. <laughs> yep, you're on, mate. Go for it. Oh, sorry, my bad. So today we're going to start with a uh, butter to use for some onion rings. Okay, making making some so, butter. It's a lovely batter. It's nice and simple. All you're going to need is 75 grams of plain flour, 75 grams of corn flour. This is just going to help thicken everything up a little bit more. Okay. Get all of that in there. Just a table tablespoon of turmeric. That's going to add a nice golden color to it. Yeah, we talked about that last week, didn't we? Yeah. You know, can't go wrong. Some cracked black pepper. Add some seasoning. A little bit of just plain table salt, again, just to give it that extra bit of seasoning. Okay. Then 70, 75 mils of just soda water. 75 mils 75 of soda water. Of okay, Stenfrog, soda water. That's rock whiskey. Whoa. 75 mils. That's a big shot. That's a big shot. Two and a half, two and a half measures, isn't it? <laughs> I can't hear you today, Gareth. Oh, you can't hear me. Wow. Yeah. I got it. I think he can hear you, but he's just saying, I cannot hear you because, you know, he, he wants to get on with the job. Because <laughs> I'm, talking, I'm talking too much. I'll let you get on with it and I'd live on the yeah. top. <laughs> or maybe we can play some video of the what we have until the his headphones are sold out or something. That might work. Det finns goda förutsättningar att göra whisky i Sverige. Vi har väldigt bra korn, vi har bra vatten och whisky kan lagras på svenska ekfat. Allt startade med att det var åtta studiekamrater som hade en träff och där kom de på den här fantastiska idén att göra en svensk whisky. 
baserat på svenska råvaror. Det var grunden till Macmyra som startade 1999. Vi försöker tillverka whisky på ett sånt modernt och effektivt och miljövänligt sätt som möjligt. Och för att kunna göra det så har vi byggt världens mest klimatsmarta destilleri. Från pelletsanläggningen får vi 125 grader vatten som vi använder när vi destillerar och för att få upp temperaturen i pannorna. Helt vatten ger ju oss en jämn temperatur under hela koket. Och det gör att vi får korta koktider och en väldigt bra produkt i slutändan. Att pelletsanläggningen ligger nära destilleriet är ju en stor fördel. Både ekonomiskt och driftsmässigt för oss. Sen dessutom så är det helt i linje med hur vi ser på miljö och innovation. Vi gör whisky enligt konstens alla regler, men vi gör det på vårt vis och med svenska råvaror. Vi framställer den på ett innovativt sätt och med nyfikenhet och med så lite miljöpåverkan som möjligt. Det är för oss en självklarhet. Well, we hope you enjoyed that little uh, slight interlude there while we uh, got our gremlin sorted out. Brendan, can you hear me? I can hear you. Sorry about that. I have no clue what technical gremlins I have luck with. <laughs> this is this uh, Bluetooth stuff, you know? Wireless yeah. thing. <laughs> like, it, like it, it all closed. <laughs> we, we've already had one complaint come in about I'm not wearing enough clothes, so I do apologize yeah. for that, but I've come straight from my home internal gym, so <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's a little bit sweaty as well, but never mind, we're ready to, we're ready to go. You know, Garrett, I think the jellos of your, you know, proper body, I think you look like <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme or something like that. <laughs> not, not, not bad for an old guy, I reckon, but never yeah, mind. Yeah. Um, when we left, Brendan was uh, making some batter, and uh, are we still on that same, the same yes. stage? Come on then, let's pick it up. Let's get the oh, focus going then. back again. Get on with this show. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, with this batter, I've already mixed it all now. So you can see how it's got that lovely, dark, golden color. And just to remind you, all that's in here is 50 grams of plain flour, 50 grams of corn flour, 75 mils of the lovely Spence Rock whiskey, 75 mils of soda water, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and some turmeric. Right. You give it a quick whisk, and you're done. And it all to rest. Mm, I have a question. Yeah, of course. What will happen if you double the size of the whiskey in the sauce or in the butter? Will it make it stronger? It will, will, make, make will, will, I, will I get drunk from eating it? No, you won't actually, because you're gonna cook it at 180 degrees. So you're gonna cook all the whiskey off, uh, all the, the alcohol off. No, it's not gonna flame today. At least not. Oh, no flaming thunder. <laughs> it will cook off though. It does cook off. Yes, it definitely will cook off. Just leaving with the lovely flavor of the actual whiskey itself. Ah, oh, right. Yes, and it's a beautiful whiskey. I'm going to talk a little bit about the detail of how that flavor gets in a bit more. But uh, crack on. What's next on the go? You got to make the burgers or something? Yes. So next to make our burgers, I'm just going to use 500 grams of pork mince, 500 grams of five percent beef mince, a single shallot, and an egg. That's it. Well, you got that's interesting because you got two types of mince there. What's going on there? Why are you using two types of mince? So I use the two types of mince. I use the beef mince as the main flavor for the burger. You can't go wrong with a nice, lovely, beefy burger. And the pork mince is just slightly fattier, meaning as it cooks down and fries in the pan, all that fat's going to melt and just add so much flavor. Oh, okay. Good, mm. good strategy. And this is how easy it is to make. You literally just grab one shallot. Give it a quick little cut. Nice little I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm so tempted. I'm going to say it. That shallot. <laughs> it's tiny. It's tiny, but it's all you need. Just give it a nice little dice. Wow, that's a sharp knife. I know. I try not to cut my fingers off, but, you know, we, we've all had bad days. <laughs> I, I try to do that with my knives at home, and, and, the, and the onion all slips off. I never seem to be able to get a knife sharp enough that would just sort of go nice, nice, nice through it. Well, I've actually got a little secret, and I just use a steel to sharpen my knife every single day. Oh, okay. And I, I, I tell you, it works wonders. 
I, th I thought about that. I, I bought these knives where, as you pull them out, th th it's meant to have a built-in sharpener as you pull it in and push it out every time, but it doesn't seem to work. <laughs> I, think so, I, yeah. I think I was sold a pup there. <laughs> well, this is the steel I was telling you about, so it just looks like that. Ah, okay. Mm. And to sharpen it, and you just run it up and down. Wow. That's look cool. <laughs> I like the sound of that. That sounds nice. Oh yeah, trust me, and especially if you like trying to show off for a female friend or something, it works wonders. Mm. <laughs> and now this is literally how easy it is to make these burgers. Whack all of your mince into the bowl. Two types of mince. Is it Add your shallot. And the reason I'm actually using shallot is it's got a bit of a softer flavor compared to onion, meaning mm. that doesn't overpower it and make it, you know, just so you don't just taste that onion. Okay. Uh, is is the shallots easier to digest uh, compared to different types of onion? Yeah, so it's a, it's a lot softer, which means it's not going to have that roughness when you bite into it, mm -hmm. but it adds a lovely flavor throughout, and especially as it gets cooked down. Mm -hmm. Again, two minutes, you just want to add a tiny bit of seasoning, so a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And then one of my favorite things, you don't have to add this, I just like to, is some garlic granules. Garlic granules. Mm. Mm. Who doesn't love a bit of garlic? Yeah. Then my favorite I like thing. They use butter, so you don't need to, you know, I don't like chopping garlic and peeling garlic. I hate that. Exactly. So <laughs> garlic granules are perfect. You know, and I don't I, get I, your hands in this mixture. I, once I was like, I told my uh, daughter, can you peel a garlic for me, please? She's two years old. <laughs> And she peeled the garlic for me, no problem, you know, quicker than me. And after she peeled the garlic, she came to me, Daddy, there is your garlic. Can I have lollipop? <laughs> <laughs> so she wanted to trade garlic for a lollipop. Sounds a good deal. Sounds I like a pretty good deal. <laughs> we're, 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 we're the lazy way. We've got the lazy garlic and the lazy ginger, which is all pre-ready chopped up in, in a, a little jar on the fridge. So a little teaspoon of that, all ready to go. Uh, a bit lazy, I'm sorry, but it still tastes good, though. Yeah, you can't go wrong, actually. So that's it. That's all. And what, what do you do with that mince? Then? Do you just leave it for a while, or what happens? Well, actually, the best thing to do, I'd say, is to shave them. So I use a little ring cutter like that. Oh, yeah. And then mm -hmm. all you have to do is take about however much you want, put it in there, and just squeeze it down, getting it nice and even. Now, that looks like a serious-sized burger ring. Yeah. <laughs> and when you that's lift the pick. Right there. And then just carefully put it onto a plate and you want to rest that in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. But if you, you can do that the night before you have people around, you know, oh, it can oh, stay. Why do, you need to, why do you need to rest it, B? What, what's happening there? So you're actually letting the mixture sort of combine and hold together. So when it's cold and it goes into the pan, it's not going to fall apart straight oh, away. It's actually oh, just going to hold together. I have a question. If I prepare these burgers like in advance, in a, yeah. I put them in the fridge. How long yeah. can I keep them in the fridge until I can cook them again? If you're using fresh mints, you can keep them for about two days. Okay. Yeah, that problem two days easily. And also, once you've made these burgers and shaped them, you can put them into the freezer and just defrost them the night before you need them. Oh. Mm. Okay. So, you know, it's absolutely perfect. Great. Okay. Well, that's uh, them ready. Uh, what's the next step? So the next step is actually going to be making a white sauce. Oh, is this the uh, whiskey cheesy whitey sauce that you mentioned yes, earlier? Yes, <laughs> So all we're going to need. What do we need for that? Lots of things and lots of cheese. <laughs> ah, I love cheese. Come on, good experience. When I say a lot of cheese, I mean a lot of cheese. Oh, wow. What type of cheese is this? So I've actually got two types of cheese here. So my larger amount of cheese here is the Gruyere cheese. Gruyere, okay. And it's a very mild cheese. It's mostly just there to add seasoning and flavor. Uh -huh. But then I'm using a really smoky Bavarian cheese just to pair it lovely, very nicely with the uh, Spence rock. Okay. Going on that smoky flavor. So uh, I heard, I think I heard you mention this is called a roux or something. What's a roux? <laughs> what is a roux? A roux is a classic French term for equal quantities of butter and flour to a known amount of liquid. Ah, so wow. in this case, I'm using 20 grams of butter and 20 grams of flour 
to 300 milliliters of milk, and that's going to give me a coating consistency for my sauce. So it's not going to be too thick and it's not going to be too thin. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Okay. And it's, honestly, it's one of the easiest things to make. All you do. Uh, you say this, you say this, but I need to try really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can see, you just add your butter into your pan and let that melt down. Let it slowly is, melt down in there. Is that uh, seasoned butter or unseasoned you use there, Brendan? So I always use salted butter for everything except I use unsalted in pastry. So it's always oh, okay. butter. Is there any okay. special types of these butters? Because when I go shop, you know, I look at the butter section, there is like 200 different butters. Like, I just you know, use normal, plain normal. standard brand butter. The, the cubes, yeah? The rectangle shape. Yeah, just a normal block of butter yeah. as well. Once you've got your butter nice and melted down, all you do is you add your flour into it, and then you're going to incorporate it in, and you're almost going to be left with a thick-looking paste. Okay, look at that. Okay. That's Show what it's going to Oh, look at that, yeah. Ah. Wallpaper paste. <laughs> <laughs> secret with the roux is actually just to cook the flour out for a second so at the end of the sauce you're not left with raw tasting flour in your mouth oh so you put it back on the heat yeah but literally just for one minute making sure you mix it around a little bit just so it cooks, cooks all that raw flour cooks out. the flour okay i see you're not tempted to have a little swig of that rock yet <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna join me then go on then there we go Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys, for a breakfast whiskey, do you think I'm alcoholic or something? <laughs> but you know, one, one, once a week exception is no problem. Okay. <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll tell you a little bit about the um, the, the, the rock. I mean, when the guys uh, who first set up um, MacMira in the 1990s, they wanted to know about smoking. They had no clue about smoking. So um, they set up a visit and they went to see all the guys over at Lafroyd on Isla in uh, Scotland, and they stayed over there for quite a while. And got the full SP on on how to um, effectively how to use peat and how to achieve a, a smoky barley and, and and to get that into the mash. Uh, so the guys learned a hell of a lot there and brought it back, but they still wanted their own take on it. They wanted a Swedish variation. Um, so as well as getting smoke, uh, um, getting peat, and there's a peat bog. Um, I think it's called Musen. Was it Karen Musen? Uh, is a peat bog where they get it, uh, which is literally Karen's bog. I don't know who Karen is, but she's got a bog, and that's where they get their, uh, their peat from. So as well as that kind of white peat they use, they use juniper twigs to on top of that, a small amount of them, but juniper twigs to get the smoke that comes through. And that's why it's a smoky whiskey, not a peaty whiskey. Um, the small amount of juniper makes a massive amount of difference to the taste. And there's the, uh, the little initial smoker that they set up when they first started trying to do the smoke. That was in the back garden of one of the guy's houses and they got complaints from the neighbors every time they tried to do smoking <laughs> and stuff like that. But uh, there you go, a little bit of tidbit there from the- uh, I love that picture. Yeah. <laughs> so, so ODUB. be? Over to me. So now, as you can see, I've got that roux there. It's literally just the flour and butter combined. Yep. It's absolutely perfect. Now, my secret here is, again, not so you don't have that harsh alcohol taste. You want to add your whiskey in now, which I'm using about five tablespoons worth. Okay. And this just means that as you add your Five milk, tablespoons, how many mil is that? Uh, about 75. 75 mil, okay. That's a lot of flavor. <laughs> flavor, yeah, that's what we're going for. And then you just want to slowly incorporate that in as well. And the reason you want to do this slowly is because you want to keep it smooth, the exact same as the batter last week. So as you can see, it's just slowly incorporating with that root. Okay, it's just watering it down a bit. Just watering it down, letting it down. And you also want to do this off the heat, or you're going to end up burning your roux, and it's just going to taste extremely nice. Okay. So as you can see, it's getting smoother and smoother. Okay. Once you incorporate, that yeah. Once you've incorporated most of it, now you're going to slowly start adding your milk. Again, just bit by bit, adding that milk. Again, doing this off the heat. Just want to keep it incorporating slowly, keeping it nice and smooth throughout the whole time. So as you can see there, it's becoming nice, it's becoming smooth, you know, can't go wrong. And as you get further and further, you can always just add more and more milk at a time. Is, it, is there a point where you, of no return when you've added too much milk? Or how do you know when, when the right amount's there? 
Well, I'm using 300 mils, and that's just because I'm using a ratio of 20, 20, 20 to 300. Oh, okay. So you can always change it. And just depending how thick you want your sauce, you need to add more milk, less milk, more butter, more flour. But it's all up to you, actually, on how thick you want your sauce. Okay, so the, 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 to take the guesswork out, you get the ratios right up front, and then you know you've got the right amount. So 20, yeah. 20, 300. Takes out yeah. the guesswork, you know that's going to be the right amount of milk. Okay. That, at least for me, yeah. And as you can see, now I've got it nice and thin and all mixed. I can just okay. go and add the rest of the milk in one quick go. Okay. And then again, give that a mix. Once that's all nicely mixed in, you want to put it back on the heat for a little bit. Okay, this is where it's going to start cooking the alcohol out now, is it? <laughs> it's going to cook the alcohol out, it's going to bring the milk up to a boil, and it's going to thicken up all in one go. Wow. So if you're standing there breathing over that pan, you're going to be breathing in the alcohol fumes, I imagine. <laughs> that's why I'm standing back, don't worry. <laughs> Good stuff. And you want the you want your whole heat here fairly high so you can bring that milk up to a boil quite quickly. So on my electric car, I've got it set on man, and I'm just going to let it come up to a boil. Okay. Oh, bless you. Camille's Sorry. allergic to getting up in the morning. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's early on a Saturday, but it's not that early. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, the guys, um, when they smoked their peat, um, they, they were actually getting it up to really high peaty levels. I mean, we're talking about eyelid levels because that's the, how they learned their trade. And they found that there um, there's a measurement of smokiness. It's called PPM, parts per million, the phenols that uh, come through. And um, on eyelid, around about 55 to 60 is a pretty high level of smoking. I know there's some ultra, ultra smokies that um, they try to set world records with uh, in different uh uh, distilleries brew gladly do an octomore, which is a intensely one, but 55 60 is a decent art bag or lager boolin, um, and that's the level of smoking that they come up with, uh, on ours. And uh, what they do though, it's, it, they didn't want that high level of, of smokiness and peatiness, they use one third of the recipe is smoked uh distillation and two thirds is elegant unsmoked and it's that blend that gives it that nice feel so it's not a slap in the face it's more a warm cozy feeling like next to a fire so that's our parts per million not we, we get the same level of peating but we actually take it down dial it down and mix it in uh with, with, with other whiskies to give a nice blend okay we done on the are we done the, on, on on that sauce is that ready to go it's just coming up to the boil a bit and if you don't boil it out it's not going to thicken so it's just okay Okay. okay and then so how the, long uh, are you how long are you boiling it for so once you actually bring it up to the boil and you see bubbles within the milk it's only going to be about one to two minutes to thicken up mm -hmm. it just depends on how thick you want it so as it's boiling and you're washing it you're going to see it getting thicker and thicker, and thicker. you know you're going to be looking at us and it's going to boil over in the background isn't it that's what's going to happen or you've got to spill half of it on your hob that's always fun as well Oh, there you, there you go. That's a good one. Uh, see, this is live, folks. We'll, we'll keep that outtake for the next outtake show, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> Already making it two shows in on the outtake. Uh, I can't hear. I can't hear a word you're saying. You're pointing away, my friend. <laughs> sorry, I said I, I've only done two shows and I'm already in the outtakes. I'm doing there you well. go. <laughs> well, there you can go. You can see it. Welcome to the outcome. Oh, look, you're adding the sauce right. into the cheese. Are you? Are you putting the cheese well, in the other way? Other way around. Okay, right. Again, another secret of this is you want to add the cheese off the heat. This stops it from going stringy and becoming a little bit grim, in my opinion. Okay. And it's literally just all the cheese in one go. So that's 175 grams of green cheese. So about 65 grams of the smoked Bavarian cheese. That's the two cheeses uh, there. Them. I'll repeat that. 170 grams of Gruyere and 65 grams of the Bavarian cheese. Yes. So it's a smoky one. Okay. Brendan, is it really important to follow measurements or you just kind of can guess? You can just guess. Of course you can. You can always add more or less cheese depending on the flavor you want. I just use these because, you know, most shops sell Gruyere as 170 blocks and very, ah. A little bit expensive, so you don't want to be using 300 grams of it, for instance. Yeah, so you got to you you, you got to be cost conscious about about the way you put the ingredients together, I guess. Of course. Right. Okay. There you well, go. Look, how you've got that? Look at that. Lovely. That's look amazing. <laughs> how, how, 
So that's ready. How long would that last for wow. like that? Would it get a film on the surface or a crust or something? How, how yeah. long do you need to use that? Well, you can put it off to the side for a couple hours. You just need to cover it with some cling film. Okay. And if you do a close cover where the cling film is just touching the liquid, you're not going to get that skin on top of it. Good tip. Mm. Good tip. Yeah. Right. So if you're making these for people to come around, you can make the sauce in the morning, leave it there all the way through and just reheat it again when it's time to serve the burgers. Okay. Is that something you could just stick in the microwave to reheat or go to put it in a pan again and warm it through? What, what do you think? You can put it in a microwave and reheat it. There's nothing wrong with it. I will just, I prefer to do it in a pan. Okay. Because putting it in a microwave, you can sometimes caramelize the top and almost make it like nacho cheese yeah. instead of staying as a nice sauce. Mm -hmm. I yeah. suppose it depends if you want to make some more dishes or not. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you see, I'm always looking for the lazy way out there. <laughs> Fair enough. Can't argue with you. Okay. So we got uh, what we got there. We got the batter that's done. Um, yeah, we have a we, cheese sauce. The that's ready. And now we've got the cheese sauce. So yeah. we've got to go to the main thing now, are we? It's just time to cook the burgers. Let's go. Let's get these burgers. Let's go going. with the meat. <laughs> I've got a pan here. Just put a little bit of sunflower oil. And the reason I use sunflower oil is because it's got a really high smoking temperature. So ah. you can cook at high temperatures. Okay. And it doesn't have a large flavor. So you're not going to impart a lot of flavor in it. It's just there to use for cooking. Yeah. I use quite a lot of um, coconut oil for cooking. And yeah. um, it, it's got a quite a low temperature for uh, smoking, but yeah. it does add quite a lot of flavor into your yeah. into your cooking. The coconut oil, I, I, I use that quite a bit. Yeah, would definitely. you use it for burger to 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 cook burger in coconut oil? Yeah, I my burgers. So I I'm a, I hold my cards up. I'm a vegan. I'll have a mushroom burger. So I have a great big portobello, and I'll, I'll cook that in the. Um, I, I actually cover it with a, a little bit of, of the coconut oil onto the surface. So I don't put the oil in the pan. I just brush uh -huh. a bit under the surface of the mushroom, and then I put the mushroom on the pan, and then just let it cook through. Uh -huh. And and that nuttiness, uh, the coconut, comes through into the juice of the mushroom, and that's what goes in my burger. But I mean, uh, <laughs> I like really oily, meaty, fatty. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it we, we all got our choices <laughs> exactly <laughs> mushrooms on the side but first meat man first <laughs> <laughs> all of us are vegan camille it's fine so yeah like i say you just heated your oil up a bit okay so you're going to cook two burgers off for us today yes i am okay is that your breakfast then <laughs> breakfast lunch i know you know burgers I are. my weight yeah, it's, I think it's more brunch time at the moment. Yeah, probably. Yeah, seems about right, actually. Yeah. You know why we're doing these burgers in the morning? So you can watch, you can see, you can get the ingredients and prepare it for lunch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good, point. good point. So um, yeah. The Rock, let's talk about The Rock again. It's um, it's 46%, so it has got quite a lot of alcohol, but of course in cooking, the alcohol goes up um, a little bit. So, uh, you know, sorry, it goes out. So the alcohol is irrelevant uh, kind of for cooking, uh, really. Um, but uh, they, they make about two, three batches a year of this in the recipe. So it's not it's not something that um, they have to do all the time. But when it's ready, they get a whole batch of uh, juniper twigs in, which are which are picked free from next to the electricity lines where they cut them down. Um, so, you know, pretty, pretty uh, green sort of credentials on that. And they make up a batch and that lasts them for, 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 for quite a while. So um, the, the, the batches, um, um, they, yeah, they come out three times a year, I think. Uh, but after you've used a smoky, uh, the next distillation, um, no matter how much you clean them, you always get a, a hint of, of, of smoke. And those whiskies, um, they're called like smoke trails or smoky trails. And Angela, our head distiller, Angela Dorizzo, she knows exactly which ones they are. And if she wants to just put a hint of smoke in something, she'll go reach for one of those smoky trails, the first distillate after um, the smoky distillate's gone through. So um, that's the way that it's used in this recipe. Okay, what do we got next, Brendan? So oh, the now that I've flipped the burgers, just to finish them off, I'm going to put them in my oven so they don't dry out. Oh, and while okay. they're in the oven for about four to five minutes, I can actually get on with the onion rings. Okay. You said four to five, not 45, yeah? Four to five, yes. <laughs> Brendan, four to I have five a minutes. question. When you, when you put them on the pan, okay, yeah. the burgers, do you just uh, uh, fry them on one side and then the other just once, or you kind of keep turning it up and down or just one side once second side and the oven <laughs> so this is a debate that we always have wherever i go and everyone i cook with and it comes to frying meat some people believe in flipping it 30 times and you're going to cook it perfectly 
uh -huh. others say you need to just flip it twice. Uh -huh. So my personal opinion, I flip them once, let them get a nice color on them and seal all the juices in and straight into the oven and cook the rest. So you actually, so, so what you're doing, you want to achieve perfect color and then you finish yes. them in the oven. Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, um, what what does sealing do? What, does that keep help to keep the juices in or something? If you seal it on the outside, is it? Yeah. So, pretty much sealing is you're putting it in a really hot pan, and it's got to extremely quickly cook the outside or the surface of your burgers, or your steaks, or anything. Which then means once you flip it onto the other side, you've sealed all the juices and the fat inside the burger. So, when you do put it in the oven, as I have. As the fat isn't going to leak out and go into the pan. It's actually going to retain within the oh, burger. Right. Oh, okay. okay. I know yeah. back in my um, back in my meat eating days, I, my steak <laughs> trick was always to just uh, turn once. So cook yeah. it uh, until until it's come almost to the point where you of your you know medium rare rare wherever on that side, and then flip it, and then that's it, and let it cook to the other side, and then the top side is resting at that time. So yeah. it's com it's coming down and rest and resting. So by the time that meat's in the middle, you can then put the meat on the side, let it rest a few more minutes, and then it should be should, should be perfect. I only ever cook it one one side each. Yeah, that, that was my early vegan. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have it anymore. Actually perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth, be honest. When was the last time you had a burger? Uh, uh, last yesterday. Last <laughs> no, no, I, I, I fully admit I'm a flexitarian. It's a proper word to look it up, a flexitarian. Uh, I'm 95, 98% vegan. Uh, but, you know, it was Father's Day. My son came over for a barbecue. He had some burgers with him and there was one spare. What am I going to do? You know, what am I going to do? So um, I, it's not it's not a bad thing. You know, it's not, not, not going to kill me. Um, just enjoy, enjoy your life. It's about, it's about, um, you know, uh, taking, taking part and um, enjoying what you enjoy, you know, but don't exactly. go to excess, especially with whiskey. <laughs> Drink responsibly. Okay. Right? So um, they're, they're cooking in the oven. Um, what's, yeah. what's, what's the final part now then? Now the final part is just actually frying off your onion rings. So I've got okay. the batter, which has been rested. I've got a little bit of plain flour, and the only reason this is is to help the batter stick onto the onion rings. Right. So it's very simple. You literally just take the onion rings. So, so tell me now, now, before you cook that, how do you get perfect rings like that? I mean, yeah. what's the secret to getting uh, nice, nice rings? Because uh, I, I want to, I want to find out this trick. <laughs> well, there's not much of a trick. It's actually I cut my onion straight down in half, right, and then I move towards the root and the head. Right. So I've actually got one here. I can give you a quick demonstration. I've got the oh, half okay. that I didn't use. Ah, look, there you go. All right, that way. And all you do is so you peel it. And it doesn't matter if you lose one or two layers. Just give it a quick little peel. And also try not to get onion in your eye because you will. And I still cry. That's it. You're going to be crying for the last 10 minutes, B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The other day I was uh, cutting onion. And I was yeah. like crying, and I was like, "If I will put sunglasses on, will that help?" So I was <laughs> cutting the onion with the sunglasses. Sunglasses on, on. You but I didn't help. I, I was still crying. <laughs> you, you'll chop your hands off doing that, my friend. <laughs> so yeah, you're just gonna grab your onion, and you just literally cut it straight down in half. There we go. Wow, yeah. look at that. And then you can just pop them out. Ah, look, there you go. So you just got to make sure you cut the onion the right way. Right. Yep. Top tip. No. Top tip from B. Exactly. So yeah, and now to fry your onion rings, like I said, you just need a little bit of flour where you're going to drop your onion rings into. Put it into your batter. Get a decent coating on there. And then you just drop it into your oil. And that's, so that's it. Like so that's um is that in like a wok you've got there about what about a, a centimeter of oil or two centimeters yeah so i'm not actually deep frying these i'm shallow frying them which is okay deep frying well what, what what's the difference between shallow fry and deep fry it's, it's surely if they're just covered in fat they're covered in fat on they what, what what's the difference there well so shallow frying is a lot easier to keep control of because you've got less oil in your pan at a time Ah, mm -hmm. right. However, whereas with deep fat frying, you can just throw something in and leave it and let it cook. With shallow frying, what you actually have to do is nurture it a bit and turn them so they cook evenly on both sides. Right. So, so the oil is actually so shallow frying when you have the onion ring there. So it's like oil is in like halfway of the ring or is it covering it all? Yeah. 
It's about halfway oh. up the rings. Okay. okay. And yeah, so then you can keep notes of this. And then depending how big your pan is, you can do 10 at a time, two at a time, three at a time, because they hold really well as well once you've cooked them. And I, I find there's no limit to the amount of onion rings that a person can eat. There's just no limit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll have to agree with you on that one, Gary. If you keep putting them in, they'll keep taking them. <laughs> Trust me, when I used to work in a pub, we always had little hungry fronts of house coming downstairs to steal the onion rings when they were cooked off. Wow. Did you give it to them? Were you not, were you were you nice to the front of the house staff or not? Well, my them. brother used to work with me, so he got nothing. Ah. <laughs> but there were a few people I liked, and I'd maybe give them a hash brown or a couple onion rings yeah. if they were nice to me. Yeah. You know, you you so need to look he, after the front of the house staff. You need to give them food; they give you a drink. Remember that. So, yeah, Brendan, um, it kind of tells <laughs> me that he was front of house because he was the good-looking one. Is that right? I mean, I'm not going to deny it, to be honest. <laughs> But the thing is, he couldn't cook to save his life. I'm pretty sure he burns water. So, okay, it's horses for courses. We've got the right. We've got the. We've got the square peg <laughs> in the square hole. That's good. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and your onion rings are only going to take about a minute to a minute and a half as well. They're really quick. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is the oil is roughly at about 180 degrees Celsius. Right. That's, 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 that's fairly moment. high. That's fairly high. Yeah. And if you don't have a thermometer to actually test your temperature, just use a piece of bread, throw it into the oil, and it should brown within 10 seconds. And you know your oil is roughly at about 180 degrees. Oh, that's a nice wow, tip. that's a good tip. tip. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you don't you don't really see the temperature of the oil. You just think, oh, how hot is it? You know, is it gonna is it gonna be ready yet? So uh, 10 seconds, a browning cube of bread in 10 seconds. Yeah. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Oh, and okay. there you go. So of course I've cooked some onions off earlier. Okay, cool. And now, now, you've got to, now, like the master chef of uh, Angela Dorizio, you've got to bring all these things together in a presentation, you know? Well, let's uh, see if I can do it. recipe together. So, plating no. up. Let me just go grab the burgers out the oven. Yeah. So, Angela, uh, you know, this, this particular whiskey and the, um, uh, the recipe that she uses as a whiskey is a, a mixture of barrels and stuff. But she also puts a bit of Oloroso in, in, in there as well, just to give uh, that nice sherry edge to it as well. So the recipe, uh, you know, it's a mixture of barrels on top of there, American oak, Swedish oak is there, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of Swedish oak. And that gives that fiery pepperiness as well to complement the smoke and then the sweet of the sherry as well just a blend of flavors to put that together so um quite a quite a clever thing it's very popular ever popular and it's part of our core range and it's uh it's been there for quite a number of years now i think this was 2017 or 16 i think uh, when it, when it when it came out i might be wrong it might be a bit earlier i'll have to look at my timeline and get my facts right sorry about that um, but i'm just guessing it's a saturday morning give me a break <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. Okay, what do we got then? Plates. So now it's my favorite time of the day. It's plating up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a toasted bun. Did you, you say plating up or cleaning up? Plating up. That's the one. Plating wow. up. Yes. I've just got a toasted bun. This stops it from going soggy when you put the burger on as the juices fall down into it. Ah, it's a good tip there. Yeah. And then to start, you always put the lettuce on the bottom. This is again just to stop those juices from actually seeping onto the bun and going soggy. Oh, so you do, you do a bottom up, All right? Yeah. Where is, when the some sauce is coming on up? So I actually put salt on the sauce, sauce, the cheese sauce, oh. the small cheese sauce. Yeah, that well, comes on top of the burgers. So yeah, gotta, ah. that's that's got to be on the burger afterwards. So a little bit of seasoning on the salad. For me, part I will. There. I'll, yeah. yeah. For me, I will ask for one on the burger and one sauce on the side, <laughs> just to have enough. So we've got a lovely double burger. And then you just grab that lovely sauce that you have. And you can just pour that all over. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Add some this onion is how would I imagine. And just put a skewer through to hold it together. Take any spare onion rings you have on the side. That's look amazing already. Take the rest of your sauce. I'm just going to put that into a little bowl to dip in. And you probably serve that with uh, fries as well or something, would you generally, I guess? Well, generally you do fries. I'm just using onion rings because I've got them spare today. Ah, right. Mm. Okay. And look and at that. Fantastic. There we go. go. The finished product. Wow. 
Luke, oh, oh, crunchy. I love the curl of the golden rings. That turmeric is a really good trick uh, to give that golden color inside that. So this is where we've got to come clean. Um, and you've got to confess to us, Brendan, because, you know, back in your country in South Africa, you don't do burgers, do you? I only found this out last week. It's amazing. <laughs> well, you guys apparently seem to do burgers on the barbecue here. And that's just not how it works in South Africa, unfortunately. <laughs> we put they, real meat on the barbecue. Real meat on the barbecue, yes. no burgers in South Africa. There you go. Well, the whole Com cow, half of the cow, or half of pig, real meat, big piece no, of the meat. Whole pig. Oh, whole you know, pig. Go whole pig. the whole pig. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. This is a multicultural experience. You get all kinds of information here. The South African guys, they don't put burgers, guys. They use real meat. So, you know, we can all learn from each other, I think, in some ways, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on that back way. So, you know, the... Um, I think what you've managed to do there is put the rook uh, to very good use. Um, did, did you want to taste anything on, on that and give us give us your feedback, or uh, are you going to Should have I? that a bit later? Go on, get it. I, I want to see you trying to get your mouth around that bloody burger. It's huge. <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. Okay. <laughs> there we are. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh, God, I'm drooling just looking at that. Now, that's all down your shirt and your beard and everywhere. But, you know, it's I like it's your go for it style. You yeah. know, um, as, as Rodney said, he who dares wins, you know. <laughs> yes, well, I'm here. Not Rodney. So, uh, well, well done. Done. tell us about the taste. What, what, what yeah. What's going on there? You've got the whole lot. I, you know, it, it's beautiful. It's, the burgers are juicy. The sauce is so much flavor. And you can rarely taste that smokiness from the rock through it. Wow. I think wow. it's just perfect. The onion rings are nice and crisp. You know, it's the perfect way to start a Saturday. Brilliant. Well, we'd like to say thanks to Angela um, for, for, for making this. Thanks to uh, Hawken, who runs the smokery. It's a guy who runs the smokery for a long, long time, and he's still there, the same guy, putting on the twigs and uh, getting that smoky flavor. It's a real um, craft batch kind of thing. Um, it's very intensive. Uh, that's why it's only a 50 CL bottle. We try to keep the price down because it's a very labor intensive process and quite costly. So we keep the bottle down at 50 CL. So it's uh, pretty manageable. It's only in the 50s, uh, but a wonderfully versatile uh, piece of fluid. And remember, I think we've got a special deal on this this week. Camille, what, what's, what's that deal? Tell us again. Ah, the deal. Yeah. So deal is buy any macmira cold range uh whiskey and get 30 percent off of your next cold range whiskey upon checking out so but you need to use code uh core week core one week word. that's it all one word at the checkout discount code core week perfect you know we thought we wouldn't tell you ben but you got a great big piece of cheese sauce in your beard which i think oh, is yeah. wonderful <laughs> <for you. laughs> Told me that's, that's definitely going on the outtakes there. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know, that, that looks brilliant. I mean, well done today. I, we learned so much from you today, actually. And it's great to be able to chat about these things and ask questions of somebody who knows all the answers, you know. Um, you know, we're learning so much about these cooking shows, looking forward to many more. So uh, what what you got lined up for us next week, B? Where, where are we going? So next week, I'm going to do something classic British. I'm going to be doing a bread and butter pudding. But I am going to be using croissants instead. I'm also okay. going to be doing okay. poached pears. Okay, that sounds good. Wow. So, you know. Okay, so we're back to, a dessert, back to a dessert next week. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be done. I love, I'm a bit of a sweet tooth myself, so. Yeah, I think that runs in the family. So, um... <laughs> We, we've got uh, we've got a lot coming up at, at all the time. We do so many shows. Um, that's the we've got. Um, it's the end of our weekly series for uh, the core series. Next week we're we're going to take it back to a, a couple of uh, seasonals, I think. Um, so we're going to be looking at our seasonal range. And on the Thursday we'll do the guys and we'll do the in-depth show on the Thursday. Uh, our, our, our lovely team. I know we got some people on there today. Welcome, guys, Mickey and the uh, and the guys there. Uh, yeah, uh, Apple Blom and Vinterglod. Um, so it's a bit of a summer and winter theme going on next week. So I think on the Friday night, we might have a bit of fun with that. Um, we'll make a few cocktails and uh, have a bit of a laugh with that. And then on Saturday, we're going to do some cooking with UB. So, you know, awesome. it's going to be a, a, a great set of shows next week. So um, I think we're probably out of time. A bit longer than normal. We had a bit of a technical hitch. Sorry about that. But I think it was worth waiting for to see those burgers and to see you attack 
that was <laughs> because I was so 40. <laughs> do, do you know, it reminded me of one of those pythons where the mouth just opens to the size of yep. the... <laughs> ah, just, went, just went all in. So uh, I'd like to thank the guys who were on the show tonight at the, at the back this morning who were on the back end. Uh, so I think we had uh, Richard on, on, on the back end there talking to guys. Really appreciate that. Uh, we've got the, uh, the con man, uh, our IT guy running the tech for us. Thanks, con. And uh, to uh, my, my co-host, uh, Camille. Thanks, Camille, for uh, your insight this morning. And, of course, to Pete. Thanks very much indeed for joining us, yeah. guys. Any last words for you two guys? Yes. Uh, guys, if you want to, like, see any other show and see what we have, products and stuff, and catch up with the previous Brandon show or other shows we do, you can uh, go on, on our website, uh, macmina.co.uk, and all the information are there. Also on our social media, like Facebook, uh, Twitter, or Instagram. Yeah, I, I, I forgot to mention on all of our social media, you got the link straight to the shop for that discount uh, this week. Yeah. So if you're on any of our social media, get in and use that link. It expires on Wednesday at midnight, I'm told. So you subscribe, got a few days left. press the button, <laughs> you know, all these things, you know, guys. Like, 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 like. Share, okay, guys, comment. have a good time. We'll see you again next time. Stay safe out there and Stay safe. have a good weekend. See you guys. Scroll. See you.